Hey guys, how's it going? Capran here. Today I want to show you guys a bit of a recap on the Discharge character as it's been really awesome and it's a very unique character and I want to show you guys uh, how pretty much close to the final character uh, ends up being from the original stage. And I made a you know video about two days ago regarding my original idea about the Discharge or how I thought I would proceed. And uh, I'm going to explain the differences between that and how effective I've found certain combos of abilities. So here we go. My character is now level 75. The main thing that you can notice is that I have pretty much no dexterity. And there's a very, um, very real reason why this is so. So I'm at 5k life, four, uh, 800 mana. I'm not running any health potions because I'm Volpac. I'm not running any mana potions because I don't need any help to uh, get more mana. So this is the build. Uh, it's very similar to the build that I posted two days ago, but uh, once you get down near the Ranger and the Duelist side, you realize that it's all completely gone. And uh, this is pretty much the idea. Originally, I had gone through here and gotten Iron Reflex in the hope of uh, using Clarity and Grace as my two auras and giving me a lot of free armor. The problem with this is that uh, I didn't have enough mana to do that, and I didn't have enough mana regen, so I had to level Clarity more than I really wanted to. The solution was to get the Duelist Mana Notes. If I get the Duelist Mana Notes, I don't have to level Clarity as much, it reserves less mana, and I have a bigger mana pool, so the auras are more manageable that way. The drawback with that is I kind of run out of points. So it became apparent that uh, using Grace and going IR was, you know, an okay option, but it would just take way too many levels. And uh, what was suggested to me by Hochef was that, you know, drop Grace, just use the Termination, because for the longest time, I wasn't even using the Grace Aura while I was Iron Reflex. So the idea was as follows. You know, you pretty much get all armor gear, you don't use Grace, and you don't go IR, and you just use the Termination. Here I have reduced mana with my Clarity, fairly low level, level 5. That small amount of mana regen is all that I need right now. Determination and Enduring Cry. Enduring Cry doesn't really need to be there, but it has to be somewhere, so it might as well be in a spot where it costs less mana. So, overall, it's working pretty well. Um, you know, zone into uh, docks here, hopefully I don't aggro any monsters, but I can show you guys that I have quite a lot of armor. With pretty much nothing going on, I have 5k armor. And, you know, when I equip the Clarity, equip the Determination, my armor's almost at 8,000, and this is before Molten Shell. So it's some really good stuff there. And uh, before I really explain what's going down with uh, all the skills and all that, you can see that the build is quite effective. I want to say that the general concept was very good. The main thing that wasn't really as polished is the Equilibrium part. The Equilibrium isn't really that powerful because... It's only good against large groups of monsters where the Ignite would correlate to the same monsters that were hit by the Shock Nova. So if it's only like three or four targets, Equilibrium kind of sucks. And if it's like a lot of targets and you're surrounded, your Molten Shell keeps on triggering Equilibrium. So it kind of sucks there as well. So I kind of feel that Equilibrium might still be a possibility in the build, but mm, maybe not. I made another addition to the gems. I'm also using Cold Snap in my Molten Shell Life Leech uh, Cast on Damage Taken link. I'm using Quality Cast on Damage Taken because I want these abilities to do, to do more damage so I can leech more life. Um, I was thinking of leveling the Cast on Damage Taken on level 4. At level 4, the skill will do 40% more damage, and the amount of mana required is also about 40% more. I'm not sure about this change because the armor from Molten Shell is really significant and it's really cool to have. So, you know, I'm, I may level it to 4, I may not. We'll have to see. But the rest of the gear is as I planned it. I am using the Windscreen Boots. Using two Curse Rings is also a pretty good option if you have very good boots. But I thought I'd try this unique as I've never used it before. And Dodri's Downing. So I have two extra curses solely, solely given to me by my items. The 5 mana on kill is actually very useful, because uh, although I didn't know it at the time, they did nearly double the mana cost of Discharge. My 5 link Discharge, without too heavily you know, mana cost support gems, costs 156 mana, so you need a lot of mana unreserved. 
that's really the one part of the build that I really missed out on was the fact that my mana was not really balanced at all and it kind of threw the auras out of whack as well. Overall though, the build seems very strong. Being Volpack isn't as big of a deal because of the way that Devouring Totem works. Devouring Totem leeches life to you, so it works with Volpack because it's not regenerated life like Rejuvenation Totem. Yes, it takes away from the um, corpses, which would otherwise be proliferation you know, candidates, but overall it's very strong and you kind of need it. Uh, for the Shock Nova links, I am using Proliferation, I am using Life Leech, but the fourth link I ended up switching out of uh, what I believe was Faster Casting and into Iron Will, and this is again because the skill costs a lot of mana. And uh, Faster Casting, inc while it doesn't increase the mana that much per cast, it increases the rate at which you cast, and really, you only need one Shock Nova, so using Iron Will extends the range of the targets that you can shock because it does a lot more damage. You can see that the top end is 1573 without it and 1162 with it. So you know you're looking at a damage increase roughly of conch effect for zero mana gain. And yeah, 331 strength is not really a lot. It's largely because a lot of spell damage that I have is given from the Searing Touch weapon. And the Searing Touch weapon, a lot of it is fire. So if you're really lacking um, you know, spell damage for lightning. So, it's a very, very good link. Uh, I, if, you know, I wouldn't really even consider faster casting at this point. I'm using uh, lightning warp there for whatever. If I had another link here, I'd probably use iron will. So my molten shell and my cold snap do a little bit more damage, so I could gain a little bit more free life leech. Now, this build is not for everybody. Going life pack, uh, sorry, going vault pack and life is pretty nuts. But it is not really like that dangerous. See, I can I can kill a pack here, and I can um, I can take quite a bit of damage. And this is largely because the totem that I have is going to be leeching life for me from other locations. So, um, like if I go here, this would be a good example. You can see that my mana is getting leeched back, and I'm still in range. And even, even though I am ball packed, you know, my totem was leeching a lot back there. So it gives you a huge life buffer. Monsters like these Void Bearers are pretty much the worst thing because, um, you know, they kind of bypass what you're doing. But you still see that even though I'm ball packed, even though I'm taking tremendous damage, I really am, um, you know, kind of taking the hits okay. This is pretty much as low as I really get in docks. Ball pack really carries a lot when it comes to life leech and having the triple curse on hit, as I mentioned in my previous video, Elemental Weakness, Warlord's Mark, Flame Ability, gives you a lot of options. Um, you know, if you really need the curse, if you're getting fucked, they're there. And then you can explode the screen. It's pretty crazy. I've had some pretty close calls, but I think at a certain level, um, your gear and your ability to play the character will pretty much trump the content that you're doing. There's going to be some issues with a single target on this character that I haven't quite figured out yet, but overall, when it comes to just killing mass amounts of monsters, I have not seen it done better. So I've been very impressed with this character. I'll include a link for you guys who decide to try, but again, this is a very crazy build to play. You will die, uh, almost certainly. Um, but if you're interested, the link will be there so you can see what I plan to do in the future with this character and hopefully I make it a few more levels before the inevitable. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.